20 years from now, if, uh, you know, I get asked about this year, I think I will probably say it was one of the toughest years of my life, but one of the proudest moments of my life. You see the worst of the worst, and you can't really describe it unless you're living it. I think, you know, I've met people who find out I'm a nurse, and then they find out I work in COVID, you know, and they want to hear everything. It's one hell of a story. Seeing all this stuff in the media and how sick these patients were in New York and how quickly their hospitals were filling up, um, you know, are we prepared to handle this if it does come to us? So we kind of were anticipating, waiting, you know, waiting, waiting, waiting for these patients to come and it, they weren't coming at first. And then once March hit, it was probably right around St. Patrick's Day, I remember we started getting our first patients. The first patient that we got, the first COVID patient, um, <laughs> when they came to the unit, the nurse who took the patient also has a family. And I could see in her face that she did not want to go in that room. And neither did I. None of us did. We didn't know, you know, how contagious is this? Are we wearing the appropriate things? So, you know, I gowned up and said, I will go in there with you. You don't have a choice, you know? What kind of person would I be if I got up and said, you know what, I can't do this and leave? There are nurses that could have retired already and they chose not to because this is a pandemic. This is what they were meant to do. And I'm blown away by their dedication. It's a daily struggle. You know, how do you tell somebody, I'm sorry, you know, you've been with your wife for 40 years and she has COVID and she's been here for a week. You haven't seen her for a week and now she is probably going to die today and you are not allowed in here. So the nurses then became that lifeline between the family and the patient. And the nurse is holding the patient's hand while the family is saying goodbye on an iPad. It kind of takes the you know, all of that emotion, the nurse takes that in and she's holding the patient's hand um, when the family would normally be there. So they take that home with them. Sorry. By far our toughest day, we had um, uh, one of my nurses, her father was in our unit. He ultimately arrested in our unit. Every one of my nurses was in there. They tried for a very long time to revive him. Um, they were unsuccessful and they took all of that um, on their shoulders that day. So uh, we kind of had to regroup at the end of that. But for it to be one of your own, I think, that was like a defining moment for everybody in that unit. They talked about it, and then they went back onto the floor and took care of their patients. I guess for all of the deaths we have, there are patients that uh, have gotten better, and we've had several uh, patients return and say, thank you, you've saved my life. I can remember hearing your voice. I can remember you pushing me and saying, you know, you're going, going to get better. Again, you're the lifeline and they remember that. The families remember that. You know, they come and they, they thank you and they, they send cards and um, that's what kind of brought us hope that for every couple of bad things that happen, we always have that one thing to remind us, okay, this is why we're doing this. It's a much needed moment for all of us. I feel like the team that we have right now is the only reason why we've gotten through this. Um, we've cried together. You know, the nurses have cried to me, I have cried to them. The vaccine definitely has given us hope. Um, the dedication of my staff gives me hope.
So have they earned that right of being called a superhero? I 100% think so. They are. Every day, they amaze me.